And here is the first grid for the 09-10 season. And on pole position, it's Johnny McIntyre. He sounded the warning yesterday. But what about Eddie Bellmark? Rookie last year, front row, first race. Yeah, sterling job. Row two, we see Andy Booth and then Craig Beard. Craig Beard only did three laps leading up to the top ten shirt. He knows he's quick. Tim Edgell, he had a bad start to the season last year. He'll be looking to stay out of trouble. And Paul Manuel, fresh from Targa and ready to win. Kane Quick. Scott there on seven. Yeah, and then Simon Richards just showing that, that pre-season testing's paying dividends. Clark Proctor, ignition troubles yesterday, but he, he keeps smiling. He does, and Andy Knight, another rookie from last year looking for a better effort. And a sterling job there by John Penny, and also Dale Williams in his own team for this year. And uh, Nick Ross and Hayden McKenzie in 13 and 14. And behind them, it's Darren Henderson. He's a former Porsche driver and John Hepburn. Then we have Matt Lockwood, of course, a new boy to the class, and then John Whelan, also another new boy. Hopefully less sideways action from his days in the Utes. David Bernard, he had some mechanical troubles yesterday. So did Andrew Anderson on road uh, place 20. Some suspension troubles. Dave Stewart, no, not from the Eurythmics, and David Hopper. And the Christina Rohr, uh, she's getting used to these cars. She's found that you can't go flat through turn one. Now, of course, and then, of course, Angus Fogg had that misfortune uh, in practice have the wreck. Yes, they've been waiting for this moment for six months. All the time spent building, testing, and thinking about it is over. All the work's done. Now it's time to play as they come over the hill, led by Johnny Mack and Eddie Bell. This is it. A whole new era on three. The BNT V8's coming to you from Pukekohe. It's a big day. Sit back. They line up, and they go. I've got to say, I held my breath for a moment there. I didn't want to see a repeat of what happened last time here, but everyone's made it through cleanly. But already a bit of dicing there from Clark Rock. You know, you have to attack from the very, very first corner, and I can't emphasize how important that is, Sean. The minute you see an opportunity, you take it. You don't have enough opportunity in this race to, to let the, the race mature for one or two laps. It's a 12-lap sprint race. Establish yourself, make the mark nice and early. to the hairpin, holding positions pretty much. And uh, saw out of uh, Castro there that the cold tyres taking their toll just a little bit. I guess that not just the tyres that are cold, the drivers warming into their, I guess, race fitness. They will do it. So six months anticipation for this. They will be geared up, they'll be ready to go. The heartbeat would have been cranking up to 200 beats a minute, probably come back down to 120 now. Johnny McIntyre established himself in the lead there, but Eddie Bell still in second place, coming under a little bit of pressure now from, from uh, Andy Booth. Oh, some big moves there going into turn one further back. There's battles everywhere. Massive, massive moment there. Dave Stewart, oh, she's sideways. For those, Angus Fogg started 25th on the grid, lap one already made up, up to 18th position, so Angus is definitely on a fly. Of course, though, Angus has the benefit of being on eight brand new tyres for the weekend. Most of the guys in the top 10 would have already used their allocation and just getting into the uh, top 10 shootout. Yeah, just before the race, Andrew Anderson pointed out, due to his, his uh, wee off during qualifying, he also had a fresh set of tyres. He was quite proud of that, but obviously fresh tyres aren't always a good thing in the V8s. Now, here we are on board with Kate Scott, just behind Timmy Edgel there. What we'll see, though, is the closer Kane gets to the, to the back of Timmy Angel's car, it start losing the downforce because the, you get the dirty air pushing on the front of the car. It can cause a little bit of an understeer, um, and that's why you might see a car drop back every now and then. Lap three now, things starting to settle down. The drivers getting into their rhythm. We watch Kane Scott up the back straight. He's number one driver he took the championship here last year officially the last corner of the last race and he took it from this man johnny mcintyre who leads is that andrew anderson getting up to no good out of the hairpin there and you're just establishing himself you know when you bat with cars with such a difference in car speed, 
you don't really know what position they're going to take, what role they're going to play. So you've got to be the aggressor, but also the conservator at the same time. And he's already up to 12th place. That's a huge, huge move. Yeah, Angus Fogg up another place up to 17th. And David Bernard actually up to 14th as well. So those guys that were started towards the back of the field, the fast guys, starting to get through. What's important here is they've got to keep circulating. They've got to get as many points as they can, because as we get towards the, of the afternoon with the reverse grid race, those bad starting positions this morning will actually pay dividend for them at race three. Anderson is really, really troubling Dale Williams there. Here we go. Now, this is interesting. Johnny McIntyre hasn't disappeared into the wilderness, and Eddie Bell's taken the challenge to him. Eddie Bell probably has that luxury now because Andy Boo's actually dropped back a little bit. So instead of Eddie being defensive or being the meat in the sandwich, so to speak, he can take the nice, natural, flowing lines like we saw in qualifying. So we're going to see what true car speed he has. And Johnny McIntyre only has to falter for a second, and Eddie Bell will pounce. So it looks like the quickest lap so far for Johnny Mack, uh, 1 minute 1.15. 1 and uh, Eddie Bell is only pretty much half a second behind him. So this is quite impressive stuff from a guy that came through the, the minis, the RX-7s and whatnot, and, you know, seventh last year in the series. I think we've got a, a potential champ on the way here. We have it. We've got a champ in the making. Interesting, though, third lap of the race. These guys are already underneath the lap record that was set by Angus Fogg in 2006. They're quicker, or just about as quick as they were in qualifying. That's how much heart car speed. So any conservatism we may have thought these guys had for the beginning of the championship, it is all gone. There was plenty of talk that when they moved to the harder compound, that, that record might not go so much for that. It was, but that just proves the evolution of the team and how professional and dedicated these teams are. They just keep trying new things. You know, if they can pick 1% or 2% increase up over lap time each year, that is total success for any team. Anderson just looking for the uh, up and under there, but he wasn't able to get past Dale Williams, but he's right on his bumper. I'd say this is going to happen very soon. An exciting battle from a guy that started second to last, and he is on the move. Angus Fogg now up to 14th, just behind him as well as David Bearsnard up to 15th. Well, after his uh, big off yesterday, Fogg said, hey, I'll give up on qualifying and watch me. I'll finish at least 13th. That's my goal. So there we go. And Andrew Anderson is just right on Dale Williams. This battle is heating up. He's thrown everything in at, at Dale and hoping that the Dale will make a mistake. But this is going to be the key point. You need to get a clear exit off the corner to get a good draft. Oh, and Whelan, beautiful gymnastics. He keeps it off the wall, that's off a, the grass. That's actually a very high-speed part of the corner. And there's another car there, John Hepburn. So you can't help but think that maybe both cars got together. A little bit of a misunderstanding coming out of uh, out of the hairpin. And back with the leader, Johnny McIntyre. And he has started to put a bit of a margin between himself and Eddie Bell. Johnny McIntyre leads race one with seven laps down. We'll be back right after this. the summer series from Pukekohe, the BNT V8s. It's the Fujitsu 200 race one, and Johnny McIntyre leads from Eddie Bell, the best Holden so far, Andy Booth, and he's followed right behind by Craig Beard. All the big names are there, but Eddie Bell so far has impressed as a guy who's only in his second season of the V8s. As we see, Clark Proctor, he's also on the charge. All these guys that had a bit of trouble yesterday, Proctor very sideways and potentially a pole sitter, but he blew it by being spectacular, but not quick on the hairpin. They've got a lot to prove in race one. They do, but they also got to be clean and methodical in race one as well. Now, we saw Clark trying to have a bit of a go here on Richards come out and half, and it didn't really work. But this is the area now where Clark's got to start trying to make the manoeuvre. We've got 600 metres down the straight into the back straight. Now, if he can take a little bit of car speed out of this, set himself up perfectly for these two corners, and get a fire coming down the back straight, he'll use that additional one or two kilometres an hour exit speed, hopefully pick up the draft, pull out and make the pass. 
So the gap's just increasing a bit there now, which is the last thing he wants. He wants to be right on his bumper, doesn't he? Yeah, Clark did try to tick uh, coming into, into the corner, coming onto the back straight there, which just would have probably executed anything that he may have been trying to do long term. And that's Matty Lockwood. He missed the start and he's put it right into the tyres. and he's hit hard. Yeah, it's actually quite a good kiss, that. And, and welcome to New Zealand V8 Tourers, Matt Lockwood. Yeah, he's uh, done very well in the Utes, uh, and he obviously is looking to go to bigger and better things, and probably that's not the way to do it. Not at this stage, anyway, but this race has established itself. There would have been probably different teams trying to take different tyre pressures, and what I mean by that is that some teams will start with low tyre pressures and hope that they get a good four or five laps before they get hot. The other way is to start with very high tyre pressures, and that way you can charge four or five laps. The, the downside to that is that the tyre actually gets past its operating, uh, maximum operating temperature and goes off and then you start losing power speed. i tell you what, this race is going at a blistering pace. All the top seven have set lap times in the 61s. That is terrifically fast. Yeah, we haven't actually seen that before in the class, so that's just the evolution going through. An update on you, Andrew Anderson now up to 10th place, but Angus Falk starting from dead last, now up to 13th. On board now with the reigning champ, Kane Scott. I can't have a think. We saw at the start of the race, Paul Manuel started from pit lane. He's actually not circulating now, so we, uh, it must have been a technical error of that car as opposed to the team maybe just missing the cutoff for the pit lane exit. Just been on board there for that ride over the hill. It is really a wild experience, isn't it? The car moving all over the place, opposite log, understeer, you name it. It's all happening as the car wants to launch itself into the air, and here's Kane Scott coming out of Castrol. This whole circuit is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. The cars get light, they get heavy, <laughs> they move, they rock, they roll. You're hanging on for every inch of life you have in you all the time. That from a man who knows he's a former chap. Tell me more. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Your leader, Johnny McIntyre, he's been all business all weekend. So neat and tidy. And he really is taking control of this race you'll coming see, into the penultimate lap. You'll see there he's using every inch of curve that's God's given him here. But you need to do that to keep the speed going in the cars because the minute you back out of it, the cars come unloaded. Then you actually when you get in a bit of trouble like we saw with Angus Fogg yesterday. Well, there's been no change uh, for the top three, top four, in fact. And uh, yeah, it's it probably a sign of how close this championship is going to be. Proctor still hasn't been able to make that move on Richards, but if you look behind him, I think he's got a bit of fog closing in on him. He has, but also the problem with Clark Proctor now is he tried to be aggressive to begin with on Richards, but then he fell into the back of the clutches of Andy Knight. So, of course, you've got to be defensive or being aggressive at the same time. Not always the easiest thing to do. And we look now, uh, jo Johnny Mack still leads, but Eddie Bell is closing the gap. He's just set a quicker lap time in the last lap than Johnny Mack, so... Uh, you know, he's probably not going to catch him, but he's certainly shown him that he's capable of doing it. Which is the important message to send straight out as well. You know, look, guys, I qualified on the front row of the group of it was a one lap wonder. Okay, now I've just backed it up for 12 consistent laps and actually circulating quicker than the race leader. Johnny McIntyre only has to do one falter and he's out, but you see how hard he's trying. He's hitting the curve, he's pinching the brakes. This guy is giving everything he can and the hope that something goes wrong. Maybe Johnny just makes a slight mistake, bounce. I do love that all or nothing style as the flames fly out of the cars. We're in the final lap of race one of the season here on three. Johnny Mack leads, chased hard by a man in only his second season, Eddie Bell. On board now with Darren Henderson. And right throughout this race, and there we go, you take the curb there on turn two and uh, get it wrong, and the car wants to move across the track. It was interesting though, when we're looking at the back of Darren's car, you'll see John Hepburn's car, the smoke coming out of it. Nothing major, it's just the cars rolling, a little bit of tire smoke coming off the guard. Well, here comes Johnny Mack coming over the hill, race one of the season. He can tick this one off. He's been all business. And Johnny Mack wins, chased home by Eddie Bell with Andy Booth third. And you've got to say the way Booth works that it's OK with him. He's played. He's been a champ a couple of times. He just wants to get the points there. But I did expect more from these new, more powerful Holdens. Yeah. Saying that, though, he finished third. He's on the podium. <laughs> what better way to start the championship campaign?
What a great way to start the season. Still two races to come today here on three. And they're only just warming up to it. As you can see, right to the line. They're chasing hard, Henderson. I think he just gained a place there. Henderson ahead of Anderson there. And there's your winner, Johnny McIntyre. He even looks business in that helmet, doesn't he? Yeah, the, the, the whole car looks superb, the whole level of professionalism. It's very fair to say that two or three years ago when they entered the thing under their own car, they raised the bar to the next level and all the teams are following and starting to catch up. And there's how it finished up. You can see how close it was between Johnny McIntyre and Eddie Bell. Andy Booth third. But look at Angus Fogg from, well, third to last. He was last after that crash yesterday. They worked till 2 a.m. this morning, and he finished 10th. So a great result for him. And uh, fastest lap, he set 61.4. Very quick. A great way to start the season here on 3.